I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Swift and silent through the foam, swollen sails, far from home, torpedoes ready, radars keep, cutting through the battle sea, soul and guardian of the waves, stealthy savior, bold and brave, turning tides in the fray, she strikes, swiftly saves the day. Hey team, this is Ripper here. You guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video that was really interesting with the small and ranked gameplay. Now, and ranked's pretty fun right now. If you uh, don't know what it is, it's basically seven versus seven at uh, different tiers, and it's kind of like clan battles, but just with no talking and uh, no communication whatsoever. You don't know anybody, and you're just kind of just thrown in the mix. And hopefully, you guys can make something out of it. But before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. If you see value in what we're doing here at the channel, uh, definitely let us know your share, your support. And show it by either hitting that like subscribe button at the bottom, leave a comment, what we could do to get better. And as always, thank you guys for support and building a better community and uh, learning stuff at the same time of the, this great game that we want to keep going. And uh, as always, thanks again. At 4,000 subs, we're going to do another premium giveaway. So let's get to it. And we'll, we'll actually do another something pretty unique. We're going to have a discussion, uh, kind of like a podcast uh, for World of Warships. And we're going to try something new. And uh, we'll do that at the after this uh, clip here. But we're just showing off a little bit of the small and one of the most broken destroyers out there. And I still love it, by the way. Small and uh, it was available for a premium, a premium or whatever you want to call it, XP, where you had to spend uh, free XP to buy this dang thing. I think back in the day it was two million. And essentially, this is kind of like the uh, smaller brother of the Ragnar, the other equivalent of the Holland, where you kind of have a little bit less Holland torpedoes, but you get the advent of radar. And so you pretty much are the uh, all-around ship. Great fire reload, uh, firepower reload, DPM. Look at the reload on the guns down there. 1.5 seconds. I mean, this thing literally has it all. It has good AA, decent AA. AA is trash. It's got the Holland torpedoes that go 76 knots or plus if you want to build for them. Great reload like I talked about. Engine boost, 30 plus 30% 30 for about 78 seconds. You got the heels and you got radar. Everything you want in a, literally a gunboat hunter destroyer. And... Uh, Definitely, definitely really um, just enjoy it all around. Unfortunately, it's not available for most of you anymore. Maybe they'll bring it back. Who knows? Uh, they tried to bring back maybe some of these um, hard-to-get ships back in the day, but uh, I guess they don't do that anymore because some people said it was broken. I don't know. You guys let me know. I mean, I think a lot of people, everybody has said that the, it is still one of the most broken OP ships out there, uh, similar to the Marceau kind of feeling, but they say still the small end literally is the bread and butter of broken OP. But as you can see right here, opening up on the Mecklenburg after we've already done our due diligence, we've already capped Charlie, we've analyzed the situation that there's no other threat in here but this Mecklenburg with RPF indicating he's the closest target. So guess what? We're just going to open up. Just, you're going to take a gander at the firepower of what um, the small one can bring. And you can see the engine boost right there. You can see we just accelerated to literally 38 to 40 knots and it's going quick. We can dodge and juke cells like a mother and it's really darn effective and it's just annoying to shoot at and that's my goal is to be the most annoying destroyer player out there because I mean annoying seems to be, seems to be the most effective because everybody's firing at you and if you they fire at you they're not firing at your team so that's kind of how I want to look at now I did not realize this is a full secondary build Mecklenburg or something because his accuracy reload is off the chain here and his secondaries are really doing a lot of work and uh, damage on us even though we're juking and dodging shells now take a look at that shot right there he shot and bupkis he missed us because we were in full reverse going 16 plus 18 plus knots and it's just hard to hit a juking destroyer not saying it's impossible just to saying it's difficult that's the name of the game here you just want to approach dif as difficulty as much as you can for the other player and as you can see, we've been firing literally the whole time here. 114, 115 up there. You can see the damage hits. And he goes down. I mean, look at that. And we're going to have a discussion about that right there. At what you just saw about battleship effectiveness. And I, I literally did a video already about are battleships obsolete nowadays? And why is the gameplay for battleships so difficult, so, I would say, ineffective? And 
It used to be the bread and butter of this game, I would say, but now with the advent of things like this, the small end, right? You have Des Moines, as you can see on my left, doing great. And there's another toxic ship to my right here. And I'll take a look at it right here. Toxic ship right there, the Smolensk. Smolensk is literally fire breather just like us with a small end and a Smolensk in the back, shooting, spotting, radaring, everybody. I mean, it is literally probably the most annoying thing possible. And you've got a Des Moines radar in the area. So very, very toxic, very evil, very deadly for Battleship players, um, even by himself that Mecklenburg can only do so much. So let's get to what is the rest of the game right here. So I'll speed it up a little bit here to, to avoid some of the dullness. But really, the, the, the effectiveness of being a good destroyer player, as we talked about, again, we're always learning about how to be effective, where I'm literally scoping out the battlefield. Where am I needed? That's why I always ask you guys, hey, look, blow up your mini-map, because a lot of times new players have no idea. I mean, this is what I've seen new players play like, like this. How are you going to use that information? You might as well turn it off because okay? you cannot determine who's who, what the names are. Some people don't even have names up there. You have no idea where people are, where you're needed, or where you're being called for. So right now, the closest target I have that is uh, within my reach but not within reach of other players is the Ohio because why? I'm still far away enough that the other ships on the map, like the Stalingrad radar, is not effective against me. Uh, maybe the Goodlow and Castillo, and I'm hiding away while the you can see the green uh, arc here means he's accelerating into me. I want to look at an accelerating ship going into me and that way he's going in solo which means that he's not, he doesn't have supporting fire from other angles so that way i know i'm at least mitigated as much damage as i can i didn't eliminate it all see there you see the incoming threat there that means somebody is firing so i take a look i right mouse. there's another tip right mouse button and it gives me free look see free look i look to where that shot is and i accelerate back and forth and determine how do i dodge those shells to mitigate as much damage as possible. As you can see right now, we are doing our job as a good fire breathing destroyer. We've got one, two, three. We're trying to get another fire. If you can get as many fires, look at all that passive income damage right there. It's still going down. Even though I may not be hitting, hitting him or shells are damaging, he's still bleeding damage unprofusely and literally uncontrollable because he can't put those out right now. And literally, he's just melting all the way down. And that helps you as a good destroyer player and boom there's our kill splash one he goes down starting up three fires right there we only got 51 hits out of 78 of non pens but guess what he was burning down passive income damage and that's what you want to do i'm in real estate so i know that it's always great to have some form of passive income so that's something to think about even in this game as well because why if my shells did not hit him at least the fire damage was still ticking him down which is your best friend that's my personal opinion on that. Now, we are we are losing our entire alpha flank right here. So what are we going to do as a destroyer player? Again, I wouldn't have known this had I not blown up the mini-map and seen, okay, I got a Petro, a Smolensk, two cruisers that are kind of little... Smolensk is a little uh, glass uh, more taint and... Un, no, what is it called? It's squishy. That's the word I'm looking for. Very, very squishy, so I know he's not going to push. Petro is armored, so he may push and take on the Castilla. Des Moines will have to do his best to uh, engage here. So I'm literally the only guy at alpha to take on one, two, maybe three ships. Because remember, I look up here, there's still a destroyer out there. I got to eliminate the shore, which is why my RPF is indicating that's the only thing possible over here, which is probably the gearing. So I check out the board. Yep, I t tab, I look at gearing. He's the only guy left. I know where his position is. That's why situational awareness is very, very good. I always run RPF on majority of my destroyers now because I need to know where they are at. If I didn't know that, I probably would have pushed in somewhere unknowingly and maybe got killed by the Stalingrad or taken torpedoes like that unnecessarily. So right now, I already know I outgun a gearing, so I'm not too worried. That's why you need a PhD level literally to play this game. You have to know what the capabilities of the gearing are if you are going to go on head first. So I look on my left, Stalingrad is being masked by the mountain. I get a torpedo hit because I anticipated that. I fired torpedoes blindly over there, hopefully to deter him. But now I'm going to use every gun I have. Now the downside, and I'll pause this right here. The downside of the uh, small end is that the front gun is literally blocked by um, the tor torpedo. So if you don't know, I'll, t I'll, t I'll look back on here. Uh, let me see if I can show you guys. Where is my ship? Okay, right here. If you don't know, the front gun, if it literally is... Um, aiming straight forward, zero to 90% here, z or zero degrees. If it's literally aiming down this line here, zero degrees, these these are basically, back in the day, these were the depth charge launchers, and uh, they're way more effective in, in uh, the modern age, but Wargaming doesn't like to have that. Wargaming doesn't want to have effective torpedo launchers because they would eliminate every submarine possible known to man. But we just make these things torpedo launchers that are dumb torpedo or are dumb depth charges that just shoot out the front and blow up, whatever. 
they are in front perfectly lined with the gun and for some reason the gun just can't shoot when they are perfectly lined up down each other so you literally have to give some angle one degree to the right or left in order for these guns to shoot don't ask me why they built it that way that's just the way it is so that that is the one downside of the small one and of course the back turret can't fire uh, at the, when you're heading zero degrees on uh, true north because honestly the, or i'm sorry zero degrees um nose in if the guns are facing just up and down the bow line if you guys are the yeah the bow they won't fire so obviously you have to give some angling to the left or the right for the guns to be effective so that's what you're seeing right there so we'll continue playing the video right here and now i've got both guns to bear because i'm giving a little bit of angle so i can get as much firepower as i can again i have the most dpm his guns his front guns are not facing me and this is where you want to basically outmaneuver your opponent because you're going left and right okay right here zero degrees I can't fire my gun. See, perfectly lined. The target is right off my nose. Zero degrees. It, the guns don't work because of those torpedo launchers. And now I have to give a little bit of angle. The reason why I was angling because I needed to get around the island to avoid the Stalingrad from shooting me. And now I know we can definitely outgun the gearing and just melt them to death. And of course, if he pops smoke, we've got our radar. And he goes down right there. Radar is 7.5 kilometers, so very, very decent range. Not too overpowered uh, like the Gdansk, like 9-kilometer radar. That would be too powerful. But right there, very, very strong and powerful. We got two kills right there, 113,000 damage. We're going to round the corner of the Stalingrad right here and see if we can... Uh, take again. We're gonna have to win this on our own here because Smolens is running in the back. Petro's gone, and he at least eliminates the Stalingrad force. Thank goodness we would have probably had to do, uh, do that as well. Kitakame, here is the bread and butter of the video right here. He is the basically that you know gimmick ship that came out with a bunch of torpedoes on the left and right. It's a cruiser, not a destroyer, but torpedoes like baked up and down the line of this thing. And man, we're gonna have to take it out now. Here is his problem, and the beautiful thing about the small one: we have a radar. Since he has nobody spotting for him, he is literally stuck in his smoke it is a crawling type of smoke where literally as he's moving it's following him and he can't turn it off so guess what we're gonna pop our radar and we can open fire because he can't see us because nobody is spotting for me he has to wait for his radar to go down and let's take a look at all these citadels boom boom citadel 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 he has tons of the citadels the citadels are all over this thing and even a small little dinky destroyer can nail it so look at that oh man boom boom this gorgeous beautiful shots right there and Kablaoui, he goes down. Splash three, that wins the game. We had to save it for our team right there. Pretty, pretty darn awesome. And uh, man, we also lost a pe Petra right there, but we had to win the game. A hundred and how much? 44,000 damage with 10 Citadel hits. My goodness gracious, high caliber right there. 399 shots. And yeah, we had to win the game. First of the team right there. Really, really darn awesome. And uh, the build will be at the end of this, uh, this section of the thing. So you can see how we built the small one. And then we'll actually go play a little bit of background video to uh, talk about uh, a little bit of uh, player uh, sentiment about how battleships are and uh, pretty fun. Let's try something new, do a little kind of like a podcast style of uh, discussion. And uh, as always, uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about it at the end of the video and uh, we'll, uh, we'll hope you enjoyed that video right there. Just 10 Citadels, really awesome. So uh, let's break into the build of the, uh, the small one and then we'll go into the podcast for about why battleships may be obsolete. Okay, so here's the build for the small one. If you guys haven't noticed, it's already kind of that uh, focused on engine boost, juking, and gun reload build, and very a little bit of survivability there. And as you can see, full gunboat with RPF, because you always want to have situational awareness as a destroyer player, as a hunter killer. So really, uh, I like this build. It's very, it worked for me a lot in the small one. So this is just uh, enjoy the background footage. It's with the Ragnar. Some people have asked me to do some footage with Ragnar. I'll actually do another video about what my thoughts are, the current state of Ragnar and how it is. But just enjoy the footage in the background. Just playing random ranked games and but the biggest thing we're talking about today is the idea of battleships being obsolete and uh, the frustration it is to play with it um, I'll actually try something new here and play uh, a video or sorry an audio um, soundbite recording of uh, you know two players and this is kind of the general discussion I've seen uh, with comments, maybe Reddit and uh, a couple other places. Well, the sentiment of how people feel the nature of the gameplay is of World of Warships. And it's been around for a long time. You know, surprisingly, uh, World of Warships has gone through an evolution and has survived through um, a lot of updates. And it's still around. And it's somewhat kind of relevant. I mean, the player base is still there. But this is a kind of from what I've, uh, I've listened or heard in, from the player base, the comments and sections about uh, battleships. And, and take a listen to the comments um, and the discussion 
uh, with these two players and to see what the thoughts are, uh, thoughts are and what kind of discussion it brings up. And you guys let me know what you think, and we'll kind of discuss it after they're done talking. So here's uh, a little recording of that discussion going back and forth. Man, I don't know what's going on lately. Battleships used to be the backbone of any team. Now it feels like pushing up in one is just asking to get deleted. I've noticed that too. It's like they've lost their edge. I mean, sure, they've got the armor and the big guns, but it's almost like that doesn't matter any- Exactly. You push up, and suddenly you're focused by every ship on the map. If it's not the torpedoes from some sneaky destroyer, it's the HE spam from cruisers that just burns you down. And don't even get me started on submarines. Honestly, I think battleships have been struggling to adapt. The game's shifted. Speed, positioning, and stealth have become more important than raw power. It's not like it used to be, where you could just tank damage and dish out punishment from the front. But isn't that the point of a battleship? To be that big, scary presence that pushes the enemy back. Now it feels like we're just glorified XP piñatas, sitting in the back, afraid to engage. That's not how I want to play. I get it. But maybe that's the issue. Battleships are still powerful, but they can't be played the same way as before. You can't just charge in, guns blazing. You've got to be more strategic, wait for the right moment to push, and be aware of all the threats around you. I know you're right, but it's frustrating. I just feel like the risk outweighs the reward now. One wrong move, and you're punished so hard. It feels like the other classes can make mistakes and recover, but in a battleship, you slip up, and it's game over. That's true, but maybe that's why battleships need to be played with more caution. You've got to pick your fights, support your team, and know when to hold back and when to push. It's a tough balance, but it's still possible to make an impact. Ugh, I just miss the days when I could lead the charge without feeling like I was signing my own death warrant. Now it's like you're constantly second-guessing every move. Haha, <laughs> welcome to modern warfare, my friend. Adapt or perish. Battleships might not be the unstoppable force they once were, but they can still be deadly if played right. It's just a different game now. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Maybe I just need to adjust my playstyle. But, I still wish they'd give us a bit more survivability when pushing. It feels like we're being punished for trying to play our role. <sighs> That's the challenge, isn't it? Finding the balance between being a tanky damage dealer and not overextending. But hey, that's what makes the game interesting. True. Alright, I guess it's time to hit the drawing board and rethink my strategy. But mark my words, the day battleships get some love again, I'll be ready to push up and lead the charge once more. <sighs> I'll hold you to that. In the meantime, let's figure out how to make the most of what we've got. Who knows, maybe we'll set the new meta. All right, so there you have it. So there's uh, the discussion between um, two players, uh, even in today's meta of just talking about it in general. I've heard a lot of this about the discussion of, you know, it just doesn't seem like Battleship players are doing anything anymore. Why are they running to the back of the map? Uh, why is their positioning so poor? A lot of toxicity, and of course, I don't encourage that. I always want to have a friendly environment. Everybody, the whole thing we can do is get better and have a good discussion about it, and we can still be respectful of each other's time and of each other at the same time. So it doesn't really, um, you know, get you don't gain anything by just dogging uh, other people. You don't even know that other person. You may, that may be either, uh, the, you know, maybe you got a twelve-year-old playing, or it could be like a six-year-old playing. We don't know. World of Warships spans all types of generations now, and for the the length of time that it's been around, it, it has brought many different types of players. And some people are just learning. You know, remember the first time you played this game, you were kind of you know unsure about things and struggling and, and everybody has that learning curve and it takes time to learn the game and especially i would argue it even requires almost a phd level to play these days because you have to know literally every single mechanic i mean some the people have talked about third party apps that talk about uh, armor penetration fusing time uh, deflection angles uh what does this ship have a torpedo or just just the makeup of every ship in the game now how i mean you go around and count how many ships there are in the game and you see if you can tell me every single thing you know about them um it's almost next, next to impossible unless you literally are a phd in this program where you understand every aspect of this game and that's why I'm saying even for the newest player, the newest player can only have fun, it seems like, with pointy clicky ships like aircraft carriers. And that's why people always make fun of, you know, new players that are playing the simplest game where you take off in a carrier, pointy clicky, whatever, or maybe even submarines. But I digress. That's not the topic of the video. But they do, <laughs> they do contribute to the overall toxicity of the environment where uh, I think nowadays the biggest thing with battleships is because you die so easily. And that's where you could hear the players talking about a minute ago where 
Uh, they were talking about the fact that there's just not as enough survivability, it seems like, anymore in battleships. Because why? I've always argued that the avant, avant, uh, aventation or invention of newer technology is to be more efficient and effective at killing things or destroying things, right? Well, if you actually play with that in this game style, because eventually this game was supposed to be in World War II kind of era, right? Somewhere around that time frame, right? World War, maybe early World War II, uh, post-World War II. You're supposed to kind of stop at that right that area, but for some reason, because the advent of technology, it seems like we are slowly increasing because people want more. We as human beings want to innovate. We want to make things better, and to be an effective, more efficient killer, you got to get more weapon systems that allow you to do that. I mean, Ragnar did not exist at the very beginning of the game, but now it does. Like you can see in the background here, we're small in because it literally is the higher DPM, bigger caliber guns that melt in battleships, belt cruisers, has radar to just do whatever it needs to do that. It has heals, it has engine boost. I mean, and, and look at these guns. I mean, um, this Columbo pushing right here, although I, I applaud the pushing, the aggressiveness, unfortunately, he's going to get punished for it because he's going to get shot from the left, from the right, and he's going to get burned down. And his entire attention is not focused on the guy shooting at him, but he's focused on the destroyer that he thinks is a bigger threat. And because of that reason right there, you can see he's just going to pay the ultimate price. So, it, like I said, uh, you know, kudos for actually pushing and playing the game in Columbo, but... Uh, the problem is a lot of players don't want to do that. I mean, a lot of players just want to survive, just get around and, and just move around and provide some kind of gameplay interaction in the in, in this simulation of game. But yes, it is a game. But people don't, are will get easily frustrated and fed up with the game if they die every single time to HE spam. Now with the invention of submarines that literally can go undetected and launch torpedoes at you and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, and then you have aircraft carriers, which also you can't do anything other than press a button that sh somehow shoots our uh, AA, our AI, artificial intelligence, AA, uh, any aircraft guns. So AI, AA, uh, say that really fast. And you don't have any control of the actual how to shoot down those ships. I just did a video that says that airplanes during their attack mode have an invincibility slash invulnerability period, which means they won't take damage until after their ordnance is spent. And then they are climb back up in the air and start over again. And that just doesn't seem fair, again, for any kind of ship. And again, the whole idea of sitting in the back, you know, trying to snipe fest, uh, that leads to very, very mundane, bo boring gameplay. Uh, imagine doing that in Call of Duty where people just sit in the back of the corners and wait for somebody to appear. If everybody did that, nobody would move up and nothing would happen. And that's why you need destroyers to go up and cap and spot and do everything. And that's why I like destroyer player. But again, going back to the battleship um, mentality of, you can see it's just the reward doesn't fit the risk where if you are literally just going to at least move up to the middle area and try to support a cap or support your destroyer or whatever, you're going to get punished severely with the amount of HE spamming, torpedoes, aircraft. You also have uh, destroyers, and that's why I like tier 10. Destroyers that can do what I'm doing right now just pummel you with 152 millimeter shells that pen almost 30 millimeters plus armor, and then also... You are literally doing um, uh, setting fires like crazy, not to mention you're also taking torpedo damage and floods. And there's a really, really, it's difficult for uh, battleships to play against these destroyers now with these heavy HE, heavy SAP, heavy, you know, even torpedoes. And now you have to deal with the um, HE spamming cruisers. And then also you have to deal with the other battleships that are shooting in the back as well. Like, for example, I always bring up Yamato. Yamato players just love sitting in the back because, one, they're so slow, they're not maneuverable, and their guns, uh, obviously, they overpenetrate almost everything, but that's all they're rewarded for. Like, let me sit in the back and launch from miles and miles away, and let me just be like that literally true artillery game. But after a while, that gets really boring, and your player base gets fed up with it, and it just decides not to play Battleship as much anymore. And uh, I've had even a couple games nowadays where I've only had maybe two battleships at the most, and the rest was carriers, submarines, destroyers, and cruisers. That was it, because people are just fed up with the battleship gameplay. I mean, literally, you read the chats, everybody's like yelling at the battleship player, what are you doing? I remember back in the day, everybody was yelling at the destroyer, why aren't you doing this, why aren't you doing that? Now it's like, literally, what are you doing driving to the back of the map to your back of your spawn and kiting away and running away, and your guns aren't even firing? So... And you're and, and you're still being burned to death. I mean, that's the, the uh, invention of technology where the range of the guns has increased. Guys are able to launch shells long range, HE spam, start fires like easy. Like look, the Ragnar can start fire really great fire chance. Starting fires like crazy. Look, I already started two fires right there on the Napoli. And you're going up up against this. No wonder everybody's driving to the back of the map, trying to save their battleship. And then when they use their heels, boom, they're set up fire again. And then also we have a submarine hunting them down and literally just torping the, the crap out of them. And then, oh, by the way, here comes the carrier 
that is now spotting them from the moon and then literally has full autonomy to, to drop whatever ordnance. Oh, and by the way, it has an invincibility period uh, on the attack run. So I don't know. You tell me, is this the new meta like uh, the players were talking about? It, it, are we going to set the new meta or is this the new meta now where battleships literally are just stuck to being at the back of the map? If you push for die, you know, dare to push forward that you are literally you may take one or two people out, but maybe but you're going to really just say goodbye to your ship and start over. Um, but that's the nature of the gameplay. Let me know your comments. Uh, what do you think in the comments below of what do you think this is? As always, thanks for your support. Let's say hopefully we bring up new discussions and uh, hopefully this will be a new podcast. So take care. Cheers.